Hello. I have been rushing, so don't mind me. And as usual, I'm going to wait until about five past before I get started. So you've got time to get your stuff, and so do I. I think I've got everything ready. Should put all these away. I've been doing my swatch project and uh, these are all the colors that I've just finished. As you can actually see all here, these are these colors. So I'm just going to quickly put these away while I wait for five past. But you can ask me any questions or say hi or, or whatever you'd like. I have my, my youngest daughter here who may interrupt me. She's good at that. just joined we're just gonna wait until five past as usual oops I'm dropping them everywhere if anyone is curious I have six of these boxes that hold all my floss which uh is annoying I don't like the like, two-tiered ones. Okay, that's all them put away. Now, it wouldn't be a uh, two little kit stitch along if I didn't readjust how I was sitting at the start. What are you saying? You yeah, just... just tapping on the computer. Oh, okay. Go back in the No problem. Alright. One more minute, and then we'll get started. Ooh. Just thinking of all the things that I need. This is one of them. Okay. Um, close a couple of things on my computer. will be helpful because I always have about a million things open on my computer. No worries. I gotta be told when she's gonna go potty. Better than having an accident. All right, well, it's five past. So, hi everyone. Thank you so much for joining. This is my third stitch along. Um, it's called Summer Vibes and I think it's kind of fun and um, if you're in the northern hemisphere then it's perfect timing because summer is about to start and we all want to get sort of all warmed up again and if you're in the southern hemisphere then uh, you might want to stitch this just to, to remember that the, the warm weather will come back. Um, but anyway. Uh, 
So for the stitch along, we're going to need uh, technically two sharp needles. Um, I've only just got one on me at the moment. Um, I gotta rummage around and find a second one, but we don't need that a second one today. So a sharp needle, <clears throat> we will need our eight DMC colors. Um, I've got I've got my spare ones here because some of these are kind of low in, in colors, in amounts, I mean. We'll need a six inch embroidery hoop. Uh, we will need our fabric, which I have a little example of the fabric here because for reasons that you'll see in a sec and that's it some sharp sharp, sharp scissors fabric scissors preferably ones that will snip straight away as soon as you cut the thread uh, and I'm just gonna grab a needle minder which is behind oh stuck um, let's go with the stitching assistant cute if you like cats which I do anyway so the first thing you're going to want to do uh, which I have already done so that's the you'll find out in a, in a second um, I've already done this part because it, the last two stitch alongs it did take kind of a little bit of time and you kind of got the hint I guess on what to do but the first thing you're going to want to do is transfer your pattern onto your paper. To do that, you're going to print out the fourth page of the pattern, which looks like this, um, on a letterhead size uh, paper. You can print it on A4 if that's the printer that you've got or the paper that you've got, that's fine. Just make sure that you are uh, forcing your printer to print onto letterhead. So it might like cut off some of the sides because a letterhead is shorter and wider than an A4 and A4 is skinnier and taller. Anyway, print this off so that it's the right size for your fabric and then take your fabric, which is my demo piece of fabric, um, put it over the top of your pattern, put it against a window or if you have one of these, a light box. These are inexpensive. Um, I don't think I got it on Amazon. And trace your paper, uh, trace your fabric. Uh, I suggest using a water soluble pen, which I'll do the makeup trick so you can see it. It's backwards, and I apologize because Instagram does that. Um, I, yeah, anyway, I suggest a water soluble pen so that when you finish a piece, you make sure that the ink completely goes away. You can use a heat erasable pen. Uh, I am nervous about, <laughs> nervous about using these because in the cold weather, um, some people or some of my friends and some stories I've heard of the ink will return so that you can actually still see the ink um, when it gets down to really cold degree weather. Uh, yeah, so if you want to use this, you can. Um, I highly suggest you do not use a regular pen or a regular pencil, um, especially not a permanent marker, which I have seen in a group of mine. Someone used a permanent marker on their fabric and then couldn't figure out why they couldn't get it out. I'm just, ugh, please don't use regular pens and, and stuff. Use ones that are or fabric so that you can get rid of it because you're going to put in a lot of work into this piece you want to make sure that it's it's going to look good when you're finished anyway so put this up against a window if we've got one on your light box trace it and then here's one i prepared earlier so it actually has a couple of thicker lines and then thinner lines because the, i started doing it in this one and um, the pen started to seem like it was going to run out. It didn't actually, it was just my light box playing tricks on me. Um, but you can kind of see the, the fainter lines of a different pen that I have. So here's one I prepared earlier. Once you have traced your pattern on your fabric, um, you want to get it tight so that it sounds like a drum. 
when you put it into your hoop. I am actually going to be using a 7 inch hoop to stitch mine and then I'm going to finish it in a 6 inch hoop. If you don't have a 7 inch hoop, that's okay. You may just need to move your piece around as you're working, um, but that's not a problem. As long as you've got a 6 inch one, then it's going to look like the finished piece. Um, so, uh, as you can also probably tell, I, I stitched my finished piece on... I'll just turn off this lamp, sorry. I stitched my first finished piece on a yellow piece of fabric, uh, and I'm going to be doing this stitch along on a white piece. That's Whatever you want to stitch it on is fine. All right, well, unless anyone has any questions, I'm going to get started. I'm going to move my phone up there so that you guys can see. So just hold on one sec. I need to plug it in too or else I'm going to run out of battery. And that would be embarrassing. See, I, <laughs> I've just done a, written a test in my heat soluble pen. Because it makes me nervous. Okay. So the very first thing, I'll just get my notes. The very first thing we're going to stitch is we're going to do it by stitches. So the first thing we want to do is the back stitch, which is not exciting, I understand, but um, we do have to get kind of some some foundation stitches completed before we really get into it. Yeah. Let me know if that looks all right and you guys can see it. Probably there. Okay. So if we're going off our pattern for the back stitching, we're wanting to find all the places that start with A on the pattern. The first one we're going to work on is the stem of the umbrella, which is DMC 344, sorry, 433, which is the middle brown colour. And we are wanting to use four strands of thread. So by that, if you're not sure, this is six strand, a uh, six strand of, um, of floss. We're going to make sure that we remove two of them. You want to do them one at a time. You want to hold all of the strands together and then just pull one out and that won't snag uh, all your strands as you pull. So now we have, whoops, now we have our four little strands. I'll just fan them out so you can see what I mean. Four strands. And we're just going to thread our needle. The first thing we want to do is make a quilter's knot. Or if you want to, if you have a different way of starting how thread starts on your fabric, that's fine. I just like to do a knot in mine. So you want to pinch. Don't mind my hideous nails. I apologize. Um, you want to pinch the the floss and the needle between your fingers. Wrap one, two, three around so that it's around the needle, and then change hands. Pull it through, hold this in place tight, and then that's your quilter's knot. And then we're just going to do a little back stitch. So you want to come up from the back side of your fabric, and you can do back stitches as big or as short as you like. I like to do them about one or two millimeters in length. Just so that then. Nice and tight together. So you want to come in exactly where the first stitch went in as well, so that you don't have any gaps. And then we come back up. Don't worry about the S. You can come up. where the S is 
because we're going to do the, the S over the top of the back stitching so that it looks like it's sitting on top of the umbrella. So this is just the back stitch. You want to come up and in the right spot. You want to keep all of your little stitches quite uniform and then go back down where you came up initially. So the trickiest part of the back stitch for this part is um, keeping it a straight line. So just do your best. It's not really a focus of the piece, so you don't have to fret if it's not perfect. If you want to do something like a whip stitch or a stem stitch or whatever, we're going to do um, a whip stitch later. Um, but if you want to do a different stitch where it kind of, you feel a bit more comfortable or um, yeah, it, it's a bit easy, a bit more lenient in regards to uh, making a straight line, that's okay. I, I do recommend the back stitch. It's going to tie in with the other area that we have back stitches. And um, it, it's nice to have that different texture. So the last one, I'm just going to do a tiny little back stitch just to sit it underneath the base of the umbrella and that's our back stitch just for that bit I'm just gonna flip it over and tie off my thread which uh, if you watched my stitch alongs before is I try to hide as much of it as I can Okay, so that's the first bit, and the other bit of back stitch. So we're going to power through our first stitch in day one. Um, is the little strings of the bikini? I'm just putting my floss back on my my bobbin so that I don't lose bits. I don't know about you guys, but I save as much as I can with my floss. Okay, so we want the next color um, for our our back stitch is going to be the darker blue, so three eight one zero. I will point out before I continue that I forgot that I was going to do the strings in the darker blue for my test stitch. So it is going to look a little different from what you see in all of my, my photos. Um, I think it's actually going to look a lot better because it's going to tie in the little leg holes with the top piece. So just I wanted to be upfront about that. And this bit we're going to need two strands. I'm actually going to take one strand and I'm going to fold it in half. And by that I mean I've threaded it once and then I'm bringing the two ends together so that it doubles up. Hopefully that makes sense. And then I'm going to do my quilter's knot. This time I'm going to wrap it around four times to make it a bit of, bit of a bigger knot. And pull through and that's my little knot. So now my I don't have a tail of my thread. It's just looped through through the center. So that's a little trick you can make. I just the main reason is because I don't have any other spare strands, and I have to cut off a whole new section of thread, and I don't want to do that just yet. So I recommend you start 
on this string so that we can go from here up to here and then from here to here and then here to here and that just carries your thread a bit nicely all right so we come up right at the top of the the string go in and then we start the back stitch as usual uh oh i've pulled through my Have I? No. I thought I pulled in all this this bit of fabric and just got tangled. But all good. So just a reminder if you're live watching this, first hi. And secondly, if you've got any questions, let me know. I can see the chat. I've got it up on my computer. Um, I have no idea, honestly, if there's a way to send a private message to people, uh, but if there is, I will not see it. So don't think I'm ignoring you, I just can't see it. What are you doing, Alex? You dropping stuff? No. I'm just going to get. Ah, the little shooter horse thing. Yeah. I got my youngest with me because my desk is in the playroom. So the shorter you keep your little back stitches, the more of a curve you're going to get. Thanks to mathematics. But obviously the, the longer your stitches, the quicker it'll take. The, the first back stitch so that I make sure I've got full coverage. I'm going to do the same here. So I start, I like to start where the back stitch is going to like end and then do the first back stitch kind of backwards. So now I'm going to start the back stitch where I go past and then go back in and then I go past it and back in where I came up. So again, as I said before with the other line of back stitches, to, to tangent from that, I'm, I'm going to have to cut some, some floss, but that's not a problem. I'm just running out of floss. Anyway, um, as I said before, if you aren't comfortable doing a back stitch where the line feels smooth that's not a problem uh, you can do we're going to do a whip stitch later um, but you can do that or you can do a stem stitch or some other kind of small kind of little stitches I don't think there is any other neat little running stitches. A uh, running stitch is a different stitch, but you can't use that, it, it won't work. Like a line stitch, I guess? Like, I don't know what to call a back stitch and a stem stitch and a whip stitch. I don't know what to call them as a, as a whole. Anyway. I do recommend, as I said before, the back stitch. It just gives it a little bit of oomph uh, to, 
to the piece itself. It's not much backstitch anyway. Yeah, I'm, I want to, I want to, like, if I wasn't streaming, I would play thread chicken, but that is not enough thread. So I'm going to cut off this thread and I'm going to have to get another piece. So just bear with me for a second. As you can see, when you look on the back, just as a fun fact, the back side of a back stitch is the same as a stem stitch. And when you do a stem stitch, the back side of a stem stitch looks like a back stitch. Just in case you hadn't noticed that. Just a fun little fact for you. So I'm just going to cut off some more thread. Oops. I like to pull out about an um, an arm's length. I it doesn't help me when I'm actually doing a stitch along, unfortunately, um, because I like to drop my thread and let it hang as much as possible. Um, and I can't do that while I'm doing a stitch long. But whatever. I'll just make it difficult for myself. Alright, so this time I'm just grabbing two strands and doing it that way. I'm not going to fold it like I did before. Alright, so we're going to do the quilters knot again. And just to make things nice and neat, we'll start down this end. It's very high pitched, Alex. Olaf was yelling. Oh, was he? Yes. Olaf was yelling. So this will be all of the back, oh gosh, this will be all of the back stitch once I can get this knot undone. There we go. Can't get it in the right spot, there we go. This we will do another stitch. It should get us to just the right amount of time for the stitch along. Gosh, I feel like I stitched this original, um, the first Summer Vibes piece. I feel like I stitched that months ago and that I haven't done a stitch along in such a long time. But technically it was earlier this month because we're still in May. Time passes strangely when you're in a pandemic. Anyway, so that's our little strings. I'm just going to double check and you can double check with me. Uh, that this is the only back stitching that we're going to do. Yep. 
cool. So we've done a little stem, a stem, pole, yeah, pole of the umbrella and the strings of the bikini. So I'm just going to cut off that thread. Oops. Just bumping you guys. in it. These are the little stringy bits of fabric. Alrighty. So the next thing we're gonna do is the basket weave stitch. Which is gonna be the corner of the ice cream. Yes, you may have noticed that I'm a lot more prepared in regards to what we should stitch next because I sat down and analyzed the whole thing one night a couple of weeks ago so that I could layer it properly because my other two stitch alongs only had a few stitches but this one has 12 different types of stitch. Anyway, for the basket weave we are going to do DMC 433 again. So the middle brown color. And we're going to do uh, all six strands of floss. So my floss is all tangled. There we go. Get rid of that. Now you're going to want a long cut of floss for this. That's why I've got all these little floaty bits over here because they're not six strands or they're not long enough. So what you can do is use, if you've got other amounts of strands like this is four strands of this color you can use this to create the grid pattern if you like uh, which hmm, I'm just thinking do I want to do that yes we're gonna do that I will demonstrate it so I'm just using four strands of the same color and time my quilt is not And now we're going to use this to create the grid. No, we're not. What am I doing? I had a brain fart there. Anyway, we're not going to do that. Sorry. We're going to get our six strands. And I will figure that knot out later. All six strands. Put it on our needle. Please, go on the needle, please. There we go. Now if you want, uh, you can use a second needle here, um, one that has a rounded tip. Um, once you've poked through the fabric and you're doing the grid itself, I'm not gonna do that just because I'm lazy. Um, but we're not, to be clear, with with this grid here, this is purely for demonstration that this is the basket weave. We are not going to just be following the lines that are here. So the first thing we're going to do is create the um, bottom right to top left lines. And then we're going to do the bottom left to top right lines. So we want to start, oops, we want to start in the bottom corner, almost, and then figure out our angle that we want, and then come and go in on the line. And then we're going to come up next to it, not too close, so we want to have some gap that we can see where we're going, and then follow the same line. 
can come in. Now, if you want to come up along this line to save some floss, you can. Uh, I find it's a bit easier to just continuously start on the same side. That's okay if they're too close. Like what you can just see that those second two stitches are a little bit closer than the first one. That's all right. The stitch itself is gonna shift everything around. As long as your lines are relatively even, then you are good as gold. Is the piece fairly long? Yes. Um, I do it from, so basically I hold it in my hand and then I pull it, I can't really show you, I guess I can kind of show you, hopefully you can see me. Um, I pull it straight out, so my arm is straight out and I cut it to where my shoulder is. Uh, and that's kind of how long I gauge my stitches. Um, because if you pull it, if I was to pull the thread through any longer than that, I'm going to get um, really tired arms. If you want to do shorter piece, uh, shorter strands, you can. Um, that's not a problem. You could do two shorter ones for each direction. Uh, that that is a technique on on basket weave to to make it two toned. We're not we're not doing a two toned basket weave stitch though, because we just want a waffle cone. So you kind of want to make sure that one of these stitches goes right up to the corner. So that you can get the, the right angle of the cone itself. Oh, this is hard to see from my angle. Getting the phone in the way. Don't worry too much about. Oops. Got core on my hoop. There we go. Um, don't worry about too much about the angle of the cone, the ice cream scoops themselves. Uh, the the straight the satin stitch that we'll do for that will sort that out. We can't really do one more there. That's okay. So now we're going to do the other side. So we're going to come up on the other side of the very first point where we came up. And then this is going to be the tricky part because I can't really see what I'm doing. You want to go, you want to weave in and out. I am going to do it this way where I'm going to do one at a time. So it's going to take me a while, but Normally I would just turn my piece around. So this is trickier with six strand floss. If you were to do this with like pearl thread or something where it's not meant to separate, it's a lot easier. But that's our first little weave. And then you can, if you want, go back if you've done an odd amount of stitches. Uh, I recommend you go back in through the fabric and then come back up at the bottom. I've got too much fabric, uh, spare fabric, so it's being a bit difficult. Yeah, I've got all these like little flyaways. Now. So the first one I went over, so this time I'm going to go under the very first stitch. This is really hard left-handed because I'm not left-handed. So then I'm going to go over the next one and I'm going to skip it and go under the following one. So then over, 
which just means you just keep it and then under. So normally you just sort of go you know, like lift and down, lift, down. Um, but I, I can't really do that with the angle of the hoop and my phone in the way. So this is just going to take a little bit of time. <laughs> but hopefully it makes sense. And then you just use the the blunt end of the needle with the with the eye of the needle to just kind of wriggle it all down so that it all sits nicely. And then I'm gonna go because of the very last one I went under, so this time I'm just gonna go over and poke in through the fabric. And that's our second one. You'll always want to be constantly shifting it. I've done that one a little bit too far on the line. There we go. Okay, so we're now going to do the, the way we did the first weave. So I'm going to go over the top of the very first stitch and then under. Then skip and go under. Help you guys see, not really. That one. A little bit. A little bit is good. Skip and go under. Skip, go under. Now, because we're no longer in this very corner here, we're skipping the strand that is actually right where the needle is. So we're not having anything to go under. So again, we're just gonna go over the last one and go into the fabric. I'm just gonna make sure that's the right spot. Yep. Okay. I've got more little wispy bits of fabric. Go away. Ugh. You're all clingy. If you make. I changed the tie around. Ah, oh, clever. You swapped them, yeah. Yeah. And then I checked them out on the trampoline. And they work? Yeah. Nice. Okay, so we're now gone past but, where the very first one is. But I Hang on. Yeah, that's because that one's got broken little axles, unfortunately. Okay, so we're skipping the first. There was one stitch that went along here. We're no longer, we're now past that one. So we're going to go over to begin with because the previous stitch we went underneath it. You can hopefully see that there. So we're going to go over and under. We're not doing anything fancy with the needle, like we're not wrapping the thread around the needle or anything like that. We're just literally going, we're doing a basket weave, we're, we're making a little grid. My needle's all tangled. There we go. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna wriggle this piece underneath the last stitch there and then just go in underneath and as you'll be able to tell you you'll run out of places to duck and weave just because you know there's only so many along this side and that's normal Try that again. <laughs> I 
Don't know if you can hear my, my eldest daughter screeching about something upstairs. She is loud. This one we're gonna go over. Oh, we're just continuously going over. We keep having, we keep losing strands of the previous direction. And that one is gonna go over the top. Hopefully, you've got a cute little basket weave that is an ice cream cone. I'm just going to do one more just to fill in that last corner. This is going to go over the top. And that is our basket weave. It should be nice and flat. If it isn't, you can just kind of like stick your needle in and wiggle around where it needs to be sitting flat. I think that one's a little bit raised, but I kind of like it. But yeah, you can imagine if we did two different colours, it would be uh, more a grid-like. But that's that's our basket weave. What's the time? What's our next stitch? The next stitch is going to take a little bit of time. So I think we're going to just finish up there. Uh, no, we'll do one more stitch. I'll rearrange my, my order. We can do one more. That'll be nice and quick. I'm just going to cut off my thread. So the next one we're going to do is called the pistol stitch. And that is going to be the rays of the sun. So there's a line and a dot. We're going to need our yellow color for that. And we're going to need four strands. Now I'm going to just use up the rest of my yellow. Got another thing of yellow, so I'm not terribly concerned. Oh, that's a knotted mess now. Anyway, <laughs> I have got two here. I'm going to fold them over and do that trick that I showed you guys before. So I've got all my ends there, and then the other end is a, a loop. And I'm going to put my needle through two, oops, maybe, hopefully, two, bring the ends together, and then the needles at the end of the loop. And then my quilt does not. So the pistol stitch is very easy and very cute in my opinion. It is one long stitch and a French knot at the end. So we'll start either on this end or this end so that you're working around and you save some floss. So we want to come up closest to the, the sun center and then we're going to wrap one, two, times for a French knot. I'll do that again slower. So we're going to go under the thread, bring it around one and two times. So you can see it looks like it's around three, but technically it's two because it's tw uh, two like full revolu revolutions around it. We're going to pull it tight. We're not letting go with this hand, with the, my left hand. Hopefully if you're doing it the same way as me, you understand. We want to 
poke our needle into where the little dot's going to be. Keep this tight, don't let go. Push it in. Don't hold it so tight that you can't push your needle in. Pull it through. Keep holding on with your left hand. Don't let go until you run out of thread to hold on to. And that's our pistol stitch. Oops. So you can move it like wee, because I'm actually just pulling the, the back of the thread. But once you do the next one, it'll be nice and taut. So we come up. Then you're at one, two times. Poke into where the little dot is. Pull this, pull the, make sure that the knot, the bit where it's wrapped around the needle is flush. This, the strap, sorry, I'm tripping over my words. Make sure that the, the long stitch here is nice and taut and that you're not letting go with your left hand here. And pull the needle through. Until it's all the way through. And that is our pistol stitch. So we come up, wrap one, two, go in and the dot. You don't want to pull the thread when you. I'll, I'll do it again and I'll explain it as I go. We come up, wrap. So once you pull it through and the needle has gone all the way through the fabric you don't want to keep pulling you just want to hold it in place so i'm not tugging i'm just holding it if you tug you're going to pull the the knot all the way down to the end here and you're going to lose the actual stitch sounds like my eldest is coming downstairs No, she's not. Sorry. <laughs> no, because it's a public holiday. Oh. Holiday. Holiday. Yeah. Well, it's not like it's not a fun holiday, but American Independence Day has to be because it's part of. Mommy. Yes. And then do the last one. Hi, mommy. You want to make sure that all of your French knots are the same direction. So you want to wrap your needle around the same way every time. Um, it doesn't matter too much, but like, if they sat down properly, they'd all look the same way. But that's our little race. You can do more or less if you want. Um, I just thought it was cute to have a couple in there. I wouldn't want to overdo it with too many, but each to your own and that's everything we're gonna do today so that's three stitches done yeah three whole stitches done i'm gonna turn that off now look oh that's better so thank you very much for joining and hopefully you understood all that and you're excited to keep doing more stitches. The next one we're going to do tomorrow is the rope stitch and probably the whip stitch. And that should last us through the whole day. Um, but yeah, so we've done our little umbrella stand. We've done our sun rays and our little straps. And then tomorrow we'll be doing the palm tree trunks. And then a lot, because the whip stitch is a lot. We're going to go around the... Oh yeah, and we did the ice cream as well today. Um, we're going to go around the um, ice cream cone. We're going to do all the writing. We're going to do all the little bases and the footprints. Um, so that should be plenty for tomorrow. Do you want to say hello? Yeah. Hello, I'm Molly. She's Alex. And I'm four years old.
Mm hmm And how old do you turn next month? Five! Yeah. It's yeah. really, 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 really close. Yeah. Are you Bye! And you're excited? Yeah. Okay. Bye! Bye! Um, yeah, thanks so much for joining, and I look forward to seeing everyone tomorrow, and Alex will probably say hello again, because she's way, way extroverted than I am. But yeah, hopefully I'll see you all tomorrow, and thanks so much. Bye!